Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J. Gale. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, identity, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 85 for February 22nd, 2021. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diana Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. And hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Diane. Hello, everybody. Thank you too, so much for joining me. And, uh, keeping me company in these uh, uh, cold winter days. This week, today is a little bit better than what it was last Monday. Hey, we got warmed up there in Oklahoma, and this, the snow is melted, and uh, now Diane's freezing. <laughs> <laughs> Still, yeah. We saw all ice in your direction up north. <laughs> Our storm went out and graced you after it got <laughs> through dumping on us. <laughs> uh, well, oh, well. Uh, if you visit www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see the video links. we got two excellent videos. The theme for this week is the Western art movement, or painting the Great West. And um, the, the first video was an excellent P- from the PBS series from Colorado and talked about uh, the Western art uh, artists and uh, their influence and what influenced them and their, you know, their, uh, um, how uh, their works kind of uh, ended up being, you know, truly, you know, American artists and, and kind of actually gained uh, some worldwide fame and everything. Um, What made me think about it is living here in Oklahoma and Constance can bear this out. You can't get away from Western art. It's everywhere because, you know, Oklahoma's cowboy country and, you know, and rodeos and whatnot. And when yeah. and I didn't grow up here, I uh, moved down here. I grew up in Indiana, so I really had no real connection. So when I started this art journey, some of my, where I used to work, my colleagues you know, said, wow, you should do some, some Western art like, buffaloes and Indians and some cowboys. You can make a lot of money. And <laughs> what went through my mind was I have no real connection. You know, with me, I have to have a connection. After I watch these um, two videos, I feel vindicated because both of the artists major artists presented in this video, the most famous one, uh, Frederick Remington and Charlie Russell, 
that's they became connected. They weren't from the West either. They were from the East, but they wanted to, they came out to the West in their teens and they got to know the Indians. They came out to the West when the West was actually dying off, you know, in the late, you know, 1890s and, you know, 1901, 1910. When, and uh, so that uh, made me feel good. I, you know, I, I have no connection, so I don't feel so bad that I'm leaving money on the table. <laughs> I have done a couple, my you know, Western type couple horse pictures and the uh, and a buffalo, but not so much as a, as a uh, trying to feel connected. Uh, these photographs impressed me, and I wanted to express uh, the feeling that I achieved, like the one buffalo water car that I did. I titled it, you know, what are you looking at? Because it was a photograph of a buffalo in the wintertime deep in the snow in uh, Yellowstone Park. And he had such an expression on his face like he was going to, he's going to tear your head off if you bother them. <laughs> it just, so I was successfully able to, you know, to complete that. But I just never had no real connection. Um, Diane, what, so what was your impression? Did you enjoy the PBS? Did you, first of all, did you enjoy both the videos? And did you, and, Especially, we'll start out with the PBS video. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of have the connection, I guess, with horses. Um, I've always had horses, so that's something that I connect with as far as the Western art. But um, but I think that's true of any art you do. If you have a connection to the work that you're doing, it comes through better. Like you understand it a whole lot better and. Um, you have, like we were saying, a connection to the to whatever it is. I mean, um, and that's how kind of I am with the ocean. I've been around the ocean my whole life, and it's something that I've spent <laughs> untold numbers of, of hours watching and understanding how it moves and stuff. And the same way with the horse, the anatomy and stuff, so I can, you know, draw them or paint them really well. And and they, them going out and spending time with the Indians and um, the cowboys and all that, they were they immersed themselves in those into that area and with all those people and it became clear like to both of them how important what they were doing was recording history really of you know what was happening at the time and I think it was um, Russell mainly he he really understood how things were like disappearing and changing and he wanted to record you know the way things were before they got destroyed <laughs> or cha or changed yeah. awesome. you know, the, in the indian culture especially he yeah he got really close to the indian culture spent a lot of times with the indians and and defended the indians he actually was instrumental in the, um, opening up some uh, reservations there so there was a a, a tribe of Indians that uh, were basically homeless and they had no place to go and they were starving. And so he got with the local government and really, really pushed, pushed to uh, uh, set aside some land, a section of land and that opened up a Pacific reservation, you know, in the, and I think it was in the you know, Colorado you know, area. And uh, see uh, Remington. Well, another thing that came out in both those videos is that uh, and and the talk that was given is neither one of them were really taught artists. Uh, Remington had just uh, what about not even a year of Yale Art School when he dropped out, and Charlie Russell, Charles Russell, didn't have any art school schooling you know, at all, and it was nothing but pure pure talent. And both of them, they went out west for the pure in their teens for the pure adventure of it, especially Charlie Russell. Mm -hmm. really into all kinds of problems <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah he was in bar fights and you know and they all and they worked they, they both worked on on ranches and they they worked with the but uh what was interesting with uh remington he spent a lot of time of course with the u.s cavalry you know and his at he grew up east you know and and uh up in the new, new york area and you know it was just this easterner you know going out west and he had the opinion you know indians were savages whatever but as he 
lived out west and then started living among his it's interesting his, his attitude changed and he was uh you know some of the people some historians have criticized him that they were exploitative you know of the, of the Indians. they really weren't they were recording they were recording what they they saw the horizon they saw what was happening and yeah and, and they you know recorded that and uh we're we're the better for it you know because uh you know remington was uh of the two remington uh, became uh, was there first and he actually became world famous you know for his uh, works of art and charlie russell came later and looked up to remington yeah and everything constance uh, did you did you enjoy these you know, videos of the the discussion yeah i did um i watched the whole whole of the first one and then part most of the second one but um there were so many artists that and what they talked about was the period that they painted was so brief between like 20 or 30 years. And it's like, it was almost all over all of a sudden, but then there were some other artists that came a little bit after that, who, even though it was over, as far as that wild and free cowboy and Indians thing, um, ran there's still so many ranches out here and ranch life is, is, uh, is pretty cool also but you know you still have all the cows and the horses because a lot of people out here still use horses and stuff and do roundups because they have like large ranches and lots of cows and they need and they go out and do that to to brand their cows and and uh yeah it's pretty cool i mean just you know because i live on a small ranch here in oklahoma you know boynton and uh, we have cows and donkeys and uh, chickens and stuff. And I've always loved having chickens and animals, but um, the cows are a new experience for me. And I really like the cows, you know, they're, you know, I don't like the ones with the great big horns, <laughs> but you know, I, I've really drawn, I haven't done any paintings of the cows, but I want to, I just haven't gone there yet. You know, so yeah. Very popular in this area too. You uh, mm -hmm. see a lot of cow paintings. You know, they. You know, when I lived in the South on the Gulf, I did a lot of a lot of beach beach scenes, and because that's where I lived. And I think any artist, as you move around, you end up doing. If you're a landscape artist at all, you end up doing what you're around because that's what's available to you. You yeah. know, so. One of the uh, stories that it, that the lecturer, uh, I think, yeah, he told about uh, Charlie Russell. Uh, yeah, he had a very ambitious life. I mean, he was in the trouble, but when he started to create art, and then he got married, and mm -hmm. it was his wife that saved him from. Otherwise, he probably would have ended up in a gunfight, dead somewhere, you know. <laughs> and she <laughs> drinking himself to death. <laughs> yeah. She you know, settled him down. But one of the interesting stories was in his early part of his career, a local wealthy lady had hired him to do a, a commission. It wasn't a real, real big piece, but still is. And uh, she agreed to pay him $25. And he, and when they first got married, uh, you know, Charlie Russell, they were poor, really poor. I mean, starving. And he really needed that $25. So he told his wife, I love this story. He told his wife to, you know, to, to deliver, you know, she was going, she volunteered to deliver the painting. And he said, make sure you don't ask for any more than 25. She agreed to $25. And we, you know, we need that $25. So she gets over there. She takes the painting over. Well, she wanted to buy money to buy a new stove also. Mm -hmm. A new stove. So she decides to ask for $35. And the lady paid it. So she had money to put against her stove and Charlie got his money and Charlie wasn't the wiser. She didn't tell Charlie <laughs> anything about it. <laughs> Later on when, when, uh, you know, he, uh, cause she would volunteer to sell his painting and she would always get more money than what Charlie wanted. And, uh, you know, he says he, he always undervalued his art, you know, and, uh, she would, she would get, uh, you know, 
Yeah, if it wasn't for her, they would definitely they would have died. <laughs> but she was a good businesswoman, which is great, you know, for an artist to have a a partner if you have a partner to be a good a good representative for you. So, yeah, I love I love that story, you know. That so so that's uh, yeah. These guys, uh, they they were serious artists um, because they did. They were illustrate more illustrative, and they illustrated for magazines and and uh, newspapers and whatever. The art world, the sophisticated art world, didn't take them too seriously, and it really wasn't. The Rem, Remington was uh, more. He started to to gain more fame, and then of course to make a living, they went and they made sculptures. And I love the story, Diane. What do you think about the story on with the sculptures between Remington and Charles? Um, well, they, I can, I can see how that would happen. Like, you know, I kind of incli I'm inclined to do that too, I guess, <laughs> but I like the story about him, um, keeping wax in his pocket <laughs> and, um, <laughs> he'd be fiddling with, with the something in his pocket the whole time you're talking to him and then he'd pull out a rabbit or something. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. Russell. He was, yeah. I, it was interesting was Remington, you know, started doing sculptures. Well, then by the time, you know, Charlie was much younger, and he kind of looked up to Remington, and he saw Remington, of course, he was definitely influenced, and he started doing sculptures. He ended up doing more sculptures than Remington, but it's like he that story where he had to, you know, fiddling with the beeswax in his <laughs> pocket, pulls out a rabbit, and then, oh, and here's a bear, and here's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. He had long, long, narrow fingers, you know, which was, you know, like pretty good for uh, for sculpting, you know, and uh, and his uh, his widows. It was interesting. Uh, there was a question, you know, question and answer with that that second video, the lecture, and they asked, you know, uh, when they both died. Remington died really young, and Remington's uh, widow was uh, very. Uh, they were supposed to have like limited edition sculptures and the foundry kept making them because she kept wanting the royalty checks. And so there were, that's why there were several hundred <laughs> copies <laughs> floating out there because of her. She just wanted the money. Yeah. Uh, with Charles, Charles Russell's uh, widow was uh, a little more uh, stringent. She realized the value of, 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 uh, things being limited and so uh, he made more he, he created more sculptures but there are less less copies i mean they actually they broke the mold you know they she she uh really kind of you know watched the foundry to make sure that they you know didn't make any uh counterfeits you know so there were still quite a few made but nothing like remington yeah <laughs> which i found that kind of interesting you know there because these guys you know, they're, and, uh, both of them after they made their career, of the West, when they've got older and more established, they left and built houses and, you know, and, and, uh, what was it? Where'd Remington move? Was it Connecticut, I think, or someplace, you know, so, uh, uh, somebody moved to California. I don't know how much fun it was, <laughs> but he never got to live in his house. He was building a house out there and he, he died before it got built. Or yeah, he Remington. got peritonitis from a um, from a uh, appendectomy. Yeah, his, his uh, appendix mm -hmm. burst, and they did did uh, surgery on him, and he got peritonitis. Peritonitis will kill you fast if you don't watch it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I was in yeah, both well, yeah, I think both of them they had houses and they built houses for their families in California. Yeah. And, and in their later years, like I said, Charles Russell, he lived, oh, he didn't pass away until like, uh, 1926 or something like that. And, uh, then his wife passed away in the forties. She lived on all the way up into the, you know, to the forties. But, uh, I just found it fascinating and I hope our listeners, uh, will take advantage and, uh, look at those, uh, videos and, uh, uh, that's a, Another definite, you know, art movement that they're they're true American, true it's American. It's worth the watch when you, if you take the time to watch them to learn about some of the American West. 
Yeah, even if you, you don't. Know, well, it also it also shows how important artists are, because especially back then they didn't have like the cameras really weren't portable. You couldn't carry them very easily out west, and, and so they were the only um, way of depicting what was there for people back east to see what was going on. You know what was what was out there. Mm -hmm. So it was um, it 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 drew a lot of people out to that area. You know, because they saw all these mountains and wildlife and Indians, and and they made it, they the stories their paintings told made it seem you know like such an adventure, and so you know it was like a, a wonderful place to go and, and see and all that. So it, I think it it caused a lot of people to move out there that probably wouldn't have if they hadn't seen the pictures, the paintings. Yeah. Absolutely. Like we had talked about beer stat and, uh, mm -hmm. brand, you know, and with the, the national, the national park, Yellowstone. And, um, they were already established when Remington comes along and you know, he kind of followed them and he was influenced by their works, you know, to, mm -hmm. as, as, as a young man, you know, to, to go out West. So it's interesting. All these artists kind of like they, they influence next generations, you know, mm -hmm. Remington, you know, he influenced Charles Russell. Charles Russell has influenced many, you know, I don't even begin to the names of, there's so many now Western American artists that are, uh, uh, American artists that do Western style, you know, art. There's, you know, just so many good ones. And they were all, you can look at their works and you can see uh, where they were from Remington and, and Charlie Russell and, and Bierstadt and Moran, yeah. Uh, one thing I was pointing out, we used to not talk about historical thing. One painting I remember vividly when I was in school and we uh, saw it in the book was a painting that Remington did of the, uh, the Indian, um, um, was it the, the sun, the, the, the sun worship or whatever, where they, the Indians, they, they put uh, Buffalo uh, stakes in the breast and they leather strap and they have to lean way, way back, you know, on a pole and for a certain, it looks like torture, you know, but it's, it's a religious ceremony. Um, Coming of age ceremony for the boys. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think that was that called a man, the man Indians. Was that the right name? It was a certain. No, it was a certain. I don't remember what it was now either, but it was a certain tribe. Yeah, they let they let him come and watch. Yeah, it was the Mandan, the Mandan, Mandan tribe Mandan, Indians. Yeah. He, they were, um, they should, he did paintings of their, the men, the young men coming of age. It was very graphic. And that that painting, no one would, if he had not done that painting, we would never have known that ceremony even existed. You know, mm -hmm. Because uh, first of all, they wouldn't hardly talk about it. They wouldn't talk about it at all, you know, because it was considered very, a, a very uh, religious, you know, uh, sac, sacramental, you know, uh, sacred uh, religion or uh, event. And then if you did get somebody to talk about, nobody would believe him because how could they describe it? Why? Yeah. Well, it's like they say, a picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't believe they could do something like that and even after that people back east saw that painting they still didn't believe it until he had some other um explorers and stuff verify that it, it was true mm -hmm. yeah and so uh they he they were very uh, uh from a historic perspective they were very very important and uh it really bothers me if i hear some you know some people you know try to say they were exploitive no, they weren't exploitive. You could tell in their works of art, they had a tremendous amount of respect for Native Americans and for the Amer Native American culture. And we would not know anything up, up. if it had not been for them. We probably wouldn't know that much about them because, yeah. you know, they were, you know, during the, the frame, you know, the, the frame of mind, the, the thinking was, you know, that they were savages and the sooner they're gone and, you know, it was, very common to say the only good Indian is a dead Indian. I mean, it, yeah, the Indian Removal Act was horrible. 
That was just the most deplorable thing ever, I think. So uh, if it hadn't been for these artists, you know, we would not know anything about these people. And uh, our American culture, they're, that's our American, they are as Amer- it's part, mm-hmm. part melting pot that we call America. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's wrap this episode up. And my name is Clyde J. Kell. You've been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 85 for February the 22nd. And we've been talking the American Western art, cowboy art in Indians. And uh, been sitting uh, talking here with uh, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'm going to say bye to both of you. And we'll let Diane say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Thanks for listening. Yes, I second that. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, if you enjoy these podcasts, give us a heads up, okay? Give us a star rating, a thumb rating, and uh, feel free to uh, send us an email. Let us know what you do uh, for future episodes. Bye-bye, folks. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.